Let's talk about the worst food for the heart, okay? Now, this is even worse than sugar, but sugar's still bad for the heart, believe me. Now, some of you are probably thinking it's definitely the omega-6 fatty acids, right? Like the soy oil, the corn oil, those oils. And you're absolutely right. That, that would be even you know comparable to sugar, if not worse. But there's something else that's even a worse version of these omega-6 fatty acids. And that would be the trans fats. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, I thought they banned them, didn't they? You don't see trans fats anymore in the food supply. But the FDA in 2015 no longer classifies them as generally recognized as safe, okay? Because they cause some slight minor complications and it's taken years and years and years and years to recognize the fact that these trans fats are really, really bad for the arteries. It majorly increases the risk for heart attack, stroke, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, cancer. It increases LDL and decreases your HDL. It creates inflammatory problems. It's been linked to autoimmune diseases, infertility, and even tendon and bone degeneration. But other than that, it's pretty safe. Now, typically when we think of trans fats, um, we think of the partially hydrogenated oils, okay? So let me just kind of explain plain simply of how they make these. So you start off with an unsaturated fat most of the time, like soy oil or corn oil. And then you heat this thing under high heats over a period of time. So it goes through this phase, it becomes thicker, right? So you have this partially hydrogenated version, okay? It's altering the chemistry. This is an artificial new thing. And the partially hydrogenated oils have the trans fats. And then if you leave it in longer, it becomes fully hydrogenated and apparently at that stage, you don't see the uh, trans fats. Now, that does not mean it's healthier. It creates a lot of other problems. I'm like, how can you go through this process and have it being really bad? And all of a sudden, if you leave it longer, it'll become healthier. So when you read any label and you see partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated, you, know, you need to avoid it. But you're making this um, kind of liquid into a salad. And they use this in pie crust in um, popcorn and cookies and crackers and croutons. I mean, it's all over. And so industry has uh, adapted to this and they're definitely lowering the amount of trans fats, which is good, but it comes with a package, which we'll talk about. But you should know that every increase of trans fats by 2% in your diet, you dramatically increase the risk of getting a heart attack or actually dying of a heart attack by like 20 to 35%. So it's really, really bad for your heart because it kind of it becomes part of your cells. It's no longer fluid. Your arteries become rigid and uh, hardened. I mean, you're introducing this very unnatural substance into the body. And at one time they said these um, hydrogenated foods were to replace the saturated fats that were really, really bad. Like they were healthier than saturated fats. The only reason they did this is to increase shelf life. Now you can take this unsaturated oil and you don't have to keep it in the refrigerator anymore, right? It's completely changed and it, it just lasts for a long period of time. Now, the interesting thing about this uh, FDA claim is it doesn't include animal feeds, right? Like animal food, even pet food or, you know, the chicken feed, the poultry feed or feed for other animals. So you could be getting these trans fats indirectly by eating animals who have been fed these trans fats, they don't even know they're getting it. Um, it's not even labeled as hydrogenated oils. And this is the problem. You don't really always know what you're getting. And so when you see something that says encapsulated citric acid, okay, and you'd probably see this, you know, in 99% of all the beef sticks, um, some of the sausages out there. And what that is, is a combination of citric acid and hydrogenated vegetable oils, which include trans fats. And I will say this, I like to consume uh, some of these beef sticks. And one that I found that's pretty good that does not contain these trans fats, this encapsulated citric acid is the Rome sticks. And just to remind people, I'm not affiliated with this company. I get no kickbacks or anything. I just recommend good products when I find them. And I will put a link down below. The other thing is that if you go to any a fast food restaurant or you know, even a, a regular restaurant, chances are you're going to be getting some of these trans fats and they can accumulate in your body. But there's something else I want to talk about. Uh, it's a loophole that industry uses 
because of the creation of a, a definition of zero trans fats, you're allowed to have 0.5, half of a gram, 500 milligrams of trans fats in one serving size to be able to claim that it has zero trans fats. So when you buy these products that say zero trans fats, it doesn't really mean zero trans fats. And this is just so logical. And let's look at this for a second, right? You have Ruffles potato chips, right? Very delicious. One serving size is basically two tablespoons of these potato chips. So Ruffles potato chips claims to have zero trans fats, right? And if you're like me, there's no way you can just consume two tablespoons, which is one serving of Ruffles potato chips. More likely you're going to consume the whole bag. And that's what I would do. So if you're eating the whole bag, you're going to be consuming a lot of trans fats, despite it saying zero trans fats on the label. Now, Western Price Foundation uh, worked with, uh, I think it was the University of Illinois to do some testing on some foods in the grocery store to measure how much trans fats are really in these foods. And so with Ruffles potato chips, they found per serving size, there were 3.7 milligrams of trans fats per gram of all the different fats, but that's just for one serving size, right? If we multiply that by the number of serving size, uh, that really adds up. Ritz crackers on the label, trans fats are zero. The serving size is 16 grams. And Western Price found when they did the testing, 51.9 milligrams. Now with the Hostess donuts, which I'm sure you've eaten before, which have zero trans fats, a serving size of 57, they had 20.9 milligrams per serving size. I mean, I don't know about you, but can you just eat that one little donut? I can't. I have to eat multiple donuts. And then we have like Crisco shortening. Um, this is interesting because Crisco shortening has been known for these trans fats, right? So they had to go back to their chemistry and really kind of redo the numbers and figure this out and reduce the serving size and also reduce their chemistry to reduce the uh, amount of trans fats. But of course, what are they replacing that with? more saturated fats. And so the way that industry has been coping with this is probably by reducing their serving size to really make sure that they fit the definition of zero trans fats, which is 0.5 uh, grams, but they also have to replace these trans fats with something else. And they've been replacing them with saturated fats. Now, some of that maybe came from palm oil, um, but it's also replaced with artificial saturated fats, right? And that would be the hydrogenated, the fully hydrogenated oils that are not the partially hydrogenated. They don't have uh, trans fats in there, but hydrogenated oils are like plastic. They're just very, very hardened and your body does not do well on them either. Just with one serving size of Crisco, they found the trans fats were not zero. They were like 11.9 milligrams per serving size. Then you get margarine called favorite margarine. They don't claim to have zero, but it's 1.5 grams. But check this out. When they evaluated the true amounts of trans fats, they found 116.8 milligrams per serving size. Now, you have to realize that just because they reduced the amount of trans fats, okay, in these foods, and, and even they replaced it with saturated fats and probably mostly artificial, they're still um, made from these omega 6 fatty acids, which are normally. Um, GMO, right? We have the soy, the canola, the corn oil, the cottonseed oil, and these are all heated and oxidized and they use solvents with them. And they've been known to create a lot of problems and inflammation in your body. And so you just need to read labels, be aware of what you're eating. When you go to restaurants, you know, really make sure you order things that have no potential for having these trans fats, like even the croutons, right? That you eat, who knows? But these things can accumulate, they can affect your heart, they can affect your liver. And you know, I really feel for the institutional food as well, because there's no requirements for trans fats for those foods. That, that would be the foods in the school system, in hospitals and nursing homes, uh, daycare centers. I mean, you can just imagine like going to the hospital, right? The place that you're, you're trying to get healthy <laughs> and uh, you, you exposure to all the, the different uh, microbes and the sick people, and then the food on top of that with the trans fats and the omega-6 fatty acids, which are highly inflammatory, even though 
it might not be trans fats. So I hope you're a little bit more aware of these foods so you can avoid them and replace them with healthier fats. And I'm talking about healthy saturated fats. And by the way, saturated fats are healthy if they come from animals that are grass fed. The grain fed animals are gonna be more inflammatory, but the fat that normally comes with the protein in nature is natural. And they've never should have been replaced by the saturated fats and especially promoted as that being something healthier. And since most heart problems start with inflammation on the inside of your arteries, you should probably know more about tocotrienols, which is a protective vitamin E against that problem. And I put that video up right here, check it out. 